welcome to this video tutorial on how to install a full cover water block on an NVIDIA GTX 285 graphics card. When choosing the graphics card, make sure it's built according to NVIDIA's reference design, otherwise the water block won't fit. The water block we're going to install in this video is an EKFC 285 made by EK Waterblocks. First, we need to remove the original heatsink from the graphics card. To do this, 12 screws need to be removed from the back of the card. Those screws are marked in green in this image. You'll also find a few smaller screws around the center. These should not be removed. Once that's done, two more screws at the front of the graphics card need to be removed. Because of the thermal grease used, the heatsink is often stuck quite firmly to the GPU. In my experience, the best way to separate the two parts without causing damage is to move them in a slight twisting motion until the heatsink comes off. Now, the original heatsink can be lifted off of the card and the fan connector can be unplugged. Next, the graphics card needs to be cleaned. First, remove any bits of thermal pad still stuck to the card. Then, wipe the thermal grease off of the GPU. I personally like to use the Arctic Clean Thermal Material Remover to clean the surfaces. Non-aggressive cleaning alcohols can also be used. VRAM chips, the NF200 chip and the MOSFETs are cleaned in the same manner. Next, we want to assemble the water block. To do this, we need the two parts of the block, some type of thermal grease, a small plastic spatula for spreading the thermal grease, as well as the three black screws that come with the block. Apply some thermal grease to the ridge on the copper part of the block. Use the spatula to spread the grease out into a thin layer. Now place the aluminium part of the block onto the ridge and fasten it with the screws. Supplied with the block, you'll find two thin and one slightly thicker thermal pad. I'll go with the thicker one first and cut it down to size. Two small pieces of this pad need to be placed on the components marked in dark blue. The thinner pads are also cut down to size and then placed on the areas marked in bright blue. Finally, thermal grease needs to be applied to the GPU, the NF200 chip and the VRAM chips, all marked in green here. It's best to spread out the thermal grease to an even layer. The spatula I used to do this with is simply a cut out piece of plastic from some packaging material. For reference, here's the overview. The thick thermal pads need to be placed on the dark blue areas, the thinner pads on the bright blue areas, and thermal grease needs to be spread out on the green areas. 
Now I take the box the water block came in and place the block on top of it, with its copper base facing me. Then I place the spacers on the block. Now I carefully place the graphics card on top of the heatsink, making sure that it's aligned correctly. Note that some of the screws supplied with the water block are shorter than the others. Four of these shorter screws are used to attach the aluminium part of the block to the card. The longer screws are used for the remaining threads. Before you install the graphics card, you should visually check whether the block is making proper contact with the card's components. Also make sure that the card itself isn't bowed. Depending on what you see, some of the screws will need to be readjusted. And we're done. Now we've successfully installed the water block on the GTX 285.